Uh, hello, welcome to Reykjavik Greipan's newscast. My name is Valur Grattison. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Greipan. This is Polly, my chief of morale officers. Uh, we need one now. This is uh, strange times to be in Iceland, COVID, uh, possible eruption and so on. Uh, before we start, I just want to remind you on our, on our online shop, of course, you're going to get wool sweaters, books, music, whatever you just want. Icelandic culture, it's all there. Also, I want to let you know about this newsletter. We have a newsletter we send out every week. Uh, and if you subscribe to, the, to our newsletter, you will know it, like the second there will be a volcano, uh, we will send that newsletter to you. Why are we here? We're in Öskjöldlíð. Uh, and there's a reason we're here, because you can actually, if there will, will, eruption will go off, there are a lot of places in Reykjavik that you could actually, and in the city area, you can actually see the, the volcano. You don't have to go to the, to the place and actually do not go there at all, uh, however, unless the civil guard says this is okay. Uh, but we're going to go up there now and we're going to talk to the most visible scientist in, in, the, in the media right now, which is Kristin Jónsdóttir, as well as the spokesperson for the civil guard, which is Rögvaldur Olafsson. Uh, yeah, let's go on. What happened yesterday? Uh, while we were actually uh, filming uh, our episode yesterday uh, in the area around Kalis, uh, the scientists, they, they found out that there was a massive harmonic tremor pulse in the area. Uh, this means that the, these are very small earthquakes, so small that they are barely visible on, on the meters, but they are so rapid that it becomes almost like a noise. What this means uh, and indicates for scientists is that there could be eruption any second from there. Uh, we got an SMS uh, after we, we uh, did the show, we were on, we were on our way back. Uh, and uh, it was quite something. I think we were one of the last people that went out of the situation, out of the area, uh, after the, like, and then they closed it. So this was, uh, yeah, this was uh, something yesterday. A lot of people thought this was it, but it hasn't erupted yet. Uh, also, uh, the earthquakes, they kind of, fell down. We haven't had that strong earthquakes now for uh, two days, but it picked up again last night. Uh, keep in mind, last yesterday there were two th over 2,000 uh, earthquakes over the whole day, uh, but they were so small we didn't really feel them. Uh, but uh, at one o'clock, like after midnight, uh, the, the, we had an earthquake for about 4.1 and we have had a lot of like strong earthquakes since then. So the area is still very alive. We still have the earthquakes. Like I mentioned, the, uh, the area has been closed now for the public around Kailir, uh, which is the non-volcanic non uh, mountain. Uh, uh, the moment that it was announced that the tremors had been measured, uh, a lot of people tried to go into the area. Please don't do that. Uh, if the civil guard tell you that it's not safe to be there, uh, don't go there then. It's, they have not only, although there has not been an eruption, there is nothing to see there actually yet. It's just a huge field of lava. Uh, but there is also, uh, there could be gas, there could be some dangerous and hazard situation, and it could in worst case scenario, kill you. So do not go there at all. Also, the roads are so bad that if you drive there, you, you, you will potentially just destroy your car. We, I think me and Art, we drove there. I, the top speed that we got was like 10 kilometers per hour. It's really, really bad uh, roads. Uh, so the civil protection in Iceland held a press meeting yesterday where it was asserted that this would not be a dangerous volcano. No towns are in danger, but there are concerns about our highway. Uh, the highway which is there is from Keflavik Airport and Reykjanesbær, of course, uh, to the town. It's a very good highway, uh, but if the lava flows over it, it's cut off. So that's a, that's a problem. There are not many infrastructures in the area, but we go into that later with uh, the, the spokesperson for the civil guard. 
Uh, also, airport is now in the state of alert. Keflavik, the main international airport in Iceland, uh, and it's only 20 kilometers from the area, from the volcanic area. Uh, they, there is a chance that the airport access could be cut off, like I said, uh, but there is not that much concern about ash. And, and keep in mind, when, when Icelanders say ash, uh, we, we have a trouble like making the H sound in the end, so it's kind of just sound like ash. But I'm not saying ash, so <laughs> just keep in mind. So there is no, no, uh, we don't think there will be any ash. Uh, but there could be gas from the eruption. We will, we will of course, ask our scientists about this. Uh, so we're going up there to meet Rögnvaldur Ólafsson and Kristín Jónsdóttir. Okay, I'll just introduce them to one. Quick hazards coordinator, which is something. <laughs> and then we have, of course, Rögnvaldur Ólafsson from the Civil Protection. I will write this in the text because this probably sounds very difficult. But we need some information about the situation, so I'm going to start with you, Kristi. What are the newest, well, like the, the freshest news when it comes to this? Uh, what could we call it? The, like uh, uh, unrest. Unrest in the yes. ground, exactly. So what we are uh, seeing now in our data points towards uh, magma, and the word magma is something we use for lava while it's underground. Yes. So it's essentially the same material, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the surface, we call it lava. Exactly. So let's think about lava, magma, um, which is intruding into the crust and moving sometimes slowly, but sometimes fast, mm -hmm. uh, both upwards and horizontally. Okay. So what we think we have been seeing um, now in, in, the, in the recent days is magma uh, migrating uh, both upwards and to the sides mm -hmm. and it seems that yesterday um, at 2 30 there was um, the magma was moving uh, very fast and they call it harmonic tremor pulse well is, um, is that right? let's just let's just call it tremor yeah okay. so let's not call it volcanic tremor but it was like small earthquakes okay um happening very very frequently mm -hmm. so they just overlap in time so yes. it's like tick -tick 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 -tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and what we think is happening is that the magma is, is moving very fast or quite fast um and it's trick it's kind of breaking it's breaking the crust so it's breaking the rock all mm -hmm. around itself um but what we expect to happen if the magma will move closer to the surface mm -hmm. is that on the surface we will see um, deformation or some kind of a movement or fractures and cracks opening mm -hmm. and also uh, some kind of a subsidence. Okay. So there will be cracks forming and subsiding and subsiding most just above where the magma is moving towards the surface. And we have not seen this yet. Okay. Uh, Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so we think this will be a fissure uh, volcano, which is basically, it's going to be a small one, you predict, or a medium size. What does that actually mean? No, exactly. Yeah, it's a good question. So there are very, very different volcanoes in the world. And even in Iceland, there are different volcanoes. So the volcanic systems, we call them here on the Reykjanes Peninsula, we have here just behind us now, yeah. um, is actually, um, we have a few systems and they, um, the, the eruptions that come from these volcanoes or volcanic systems is uh, fissure eruptions. So they, it's essentially just cracks opening mm -hmm. and the magma is coming up. Uh, there is very, very little ash, mm -hmm. and the magma is just flowing in the surrounding. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about this scenario that we are talking about, the possible magma eruption uh, yeah. on the Reykjanes Peninsula, is that what we've seen so far is that the, uh, all the earthquakes, they are far from the roads. Yes. They are far from the habitated areas. Mm -hmm. So if we model uh, um, the scenario of um, magma flowing, mm -hmm. it is not going to reach the habitated areas exactly. and it's not going to reach the roads. And we know this, this is pretty clear. As the situation is now, uh, uh, from our modeling, this is what we, uh, Please, what we would least. assume. Yes. Yeah. So, 
I mean, uh, for this, this is just a basic question for those that, that are new for, to the country and they have never experienced an earthquake like this before. Is there any reason to be concerned about the quakes? Because we have a, have a lot of them. The biggest one is, of course, 5.7, but then we're, we're down to nothing, like just tremors. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm thinking about, like, uh, should they be afraid about it? Uh, like, as in, are the buildings going to stand? Uh, the roads are the safe? Uh, and this situation. I think you should, Rögvaldur, could answer this question. Yeah. How safe are we, actually? I think we're pretty safe. Like uh, Christine uh, said, uh, we have pretty good modeling and, and we know uh, pretty much what we're dealing with. We know what types of earthquakes we can have and roughly the size and roughly where. Uh, and uh, everything, all the infrastructure is designed uh, to withstand these types of earthquakes and also the uh, buildings mm -hmm. and things like that. So uh, we do not expect buildings to collapse. You, you, you might see some fractures in, in, in some buildings. Yeah, in the walls and, 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 yeah, and something like ceilings. That. Yeah. But, but, uh, but a total collapse of buildings is something that we do not expect to see. Okay. So, and of course we know that uh, for for people, uh, the, the experience is uh, can be unnerving mm -hmm. uh, because the sun you, you can't do anything about and the whole earth is shaking. But there's basically nothing to worry about. Okay. Uh, also, uh, like there has been after the news to, broke yesterday about the tremors. Uh, a lot of people try to go to the area. Uh, this was obviously a problem according to the news. So I ask you again, like. I mean, it's not. It's understandable that people want to see some volcano, I guess. But uh, what can we tell people to do? And, and perhaps, of course, do not go to the area. But are there other ways to see this? I mean, we are suggesting this place, of course. We have a yeah, great view yeah. here. The area we're looking at now, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have any infrastructure, which is a good thing for us because then uh, there, there's no areas in danger and no people in, in danger. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, the, 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 this type of eruptions, we sometimes call them tourist eruptions. Yes, exactly. Because they are very scenic and, and, and people you know, want to experience this type of event. And, uh, and that, that's something that uh, it, it's no problem for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, while the event is still happening and we don't know exactly what is going on, where the eruption is coming up and, and things like that, it's not good to have people in the area. Exactly. Uh, be and the, and because, you know, having the situation also have to be looking for people, that's, that's not a good, good, mi good mix. Which also brings us to, like, uh, uh, there have been a lot of questions about gas. Uh, and this seems to be a real concern. Uh, I mean, are we? Do we have to buy gas masks or uh, turn this out, like switch this out for gas mask, or what do we need to do? What is the real danger here when it comes to gas? So, for the uh, habitated areas uh, around uh, the 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 area we are talking about, where a possible eruption could occur, uh, we do not need to worry in particular. So what from our modeling, and again, we are we're using models based on the best knowledge of what kind of eruptions we expect in the area mm -hmm. and about the knowledge we have uh, from previous eruptions about how much gas we expect. So the, the gas we are concerned about is called SO2. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not very nice, you know. It's uh, it can <laughs> it hurt is. a little bit in the in the in the throat and so. Yeah. But we have experience from whole rain eruption in, in 2014 and 2015. Yeah, in Bardarbunga. In right. Bardarbunga, yeah. exactly. So um, we already people already people living here, both in Reykjavik and also importantly in uh, southeast Iceland, they remember this clearly. And sometimes it, um, there were days where the uh, children did not go to school because mm -hmm. it was safer just to stay inside. Mm -hmm. But um, the concentrations we expect uh, from an eruption here would not be that dense and uh, and also when we are farther away from the from the lava it, it gets diluted so um, the most probable uh, scenario is that we will have there will be some days because of course it's gonna blow with the winds yeah, exactly so uh, for for the areas uh, in the surrounding the the um, possible lava scenario um, 
there will be days where this will be annoying. Yeah. You know, you will maybe feel something in your throat, most okay. people. And l most and people, like yeah, healthy and, people. And and exactly. Yeah. And, and people with underlying asthma and so, they have mm -hmm. to take care of themselves and not go out jogging, not, uh, you know, plan long hikes yeah. during okay. during the days when there is a lot of gas. And importantly, weather uh, will, along with the weather forecast, always uh, show um, uh, gas pollution gas yeah. pollution yeah. forecasts okay so this is something that we plan but I can hear this is more than just a, a, a needless concern I guess well it depends on the wind so yeah. if we will be unlucky we might have a lot of wind and a few days where we would be staying inside but for the most part, for example, in the capital area, the winds are uh, are, are not blowing so yeah. much in this direction. Oh, yeah. um, so we just have to take one day at a time. How about water? There have been some concern about polluted water, even that this will change somehow the thermal energy. Mm -hmm. have, is there any concerns about this? I think like all the scientists are looking into this and we have, you know, everybody now is just looking at the possible scenarios and right now we don't uh, we don't see that there is a concern the, the okay. main like drinking water does not come from this area okay so um, okay but uh, f for the civil guard and the police this is quite the new reality I guess I mean this have often been for in the countryside but but to have a, a, a situation like this to contain and like secure is, is quite a task I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it, it's basically, when you break it down, it, it's the, the same situation. You, even, uh, you, you, you can even compare it to what we're doing regarding COVID. So it, it's, it's usually all, always the same things that we have to do. So, uh, so we are quite used to uh, uh, dealing with situations like this. So, but of course it, it's a, a challenge being this uh, close to uh, the, the largest populated area in Iceland. Yeah. But that's not something, uh, we haven't seen anything in the modelings or, or in, the, in the predictions that, uh, that, that is a cause for, for grave concern. And the last question is basically, how sure are we that this will actually <laughs> go off? Will, will it go off like in a month, two, three, or are we talking about days or hours? We cannot say. Uh, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty at this moment. And we just have to follow what's, you know, the data and, and mm -hmm. try to make sense out of what's happening. And, and we are, um, you know, doing our best to include also um, the best scientists to mm -hmm. work on this and to come up with a consensus of the most likely scenarios. Yeah. Um, but we just have to wait and see. And mm -hmm. uh, we have, like, everybody on deck right now. Yeah, and it's also very important that uh, like we have done with the COVID, uh, where we, you know, everything we know, we, 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 we give that inform information out. It's the same regarding uh, uh, volcanic activity or anything thing like that. If we know something, we will tell you. So yeah. people the, don't uh, have to worry about we, that and also we know something, we're not telling you. For, for English-speaking people in Iceland, uh, almanavarnir.is is all in English, right? And, and you can find all the information there or at yes. roof.is, right? Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks for coming and thanks for your time. I know you're a very busy people. No eruption, so you're, you're, no, still, yeah, you're still good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it for today's uh, show. I uh, hope you have learned something from them. Uh, keep in mind you can go to roof.is, almannavarnir.is. Uh, also keep in mind that if you want to see the eruption and you're in Iceland, uh, there are many ways to do it. Uh, the best way is basically Pertland. Uh, or just this area here. There is also a mountain there called Helgafell, a beautiful mountain. It takes you like 10, 20 minutes to, to hike up it, and it has like a crazy view over this. So you can you can view this eruption it, when it will happen, uh, like in, in a very in, in many places. Uh, if there will be eruption, it will be last for like one or two weeks, not much more. So this is not like a, like the new crazy reality of everything, but it's different definitely. Uh, and one more thing, uh, <coughs> uh, thanks for like all of your comments and, and thanks for watching and just remember to subscribe if you like it and so on. That's it for us today and uh, yeah, just be safe and see you later.
Engi bolti. Það gerðum við bolta því. 